Hello again. Uh, in the last couple of videos I've been talking about Michael Polanyi and his model of tacit and explicit knowledge and how kind of covertly hidden within the terms of those uh, of that model, within the terms tacit and explicit, are a whole series of metaphors largely to do with space, at least that's the, that's the bit I've been trying to uncover with that bit, in which explicit knowledge is configured conceptually as existing external to the body, placed at some distance from the body, perhaps unrolled and, uh, as I say, located outside and at a distance, whereas tacit knowledge in Polanyi is located inside of the body. And there's a series of, um, of coherencies around that to do with how, uh, how we might sensorially access something which is distant, uh, which by implication we can only access by sight, possibly, and so metaphors of sight start to come into play with explicit knowledge, as opposed to tacit knowledge in Polanyi, which is configured as existing in the darkness inside the body. So other kinds of metaphors associated with uh, the haptic or with the somatic, with feeling and touch, start to come into play with tacit knowledge. Um, what I primarily wanted to do with that, really, was just to lay out the, the, the spatial metaphors in, in, uh, in Polanyi. And I want to extend that now by talking about a different epistemological system. I'll begin talking about it here and then extend that over the next two or three videos. And this is a, a model that comes from where well, it's called the Data Information Knowledge Wisdom Hierarchy. Uh, and it's used extensively or has been used extensively in kind of business and management uh, and the knowledge management industry more generally. And it's used extensively in, in, in that context. Uh, so I've written this stuff out, so I'll be reading it out, but I may have to break off occasionally if I don't think what I've read is clear. Okay, I want to start with a quotation from T.S. Eliot from a poem he wrote called The Rock. He says this, he says, Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? That's a series of questions which are really picked up again in a song by Frank Zappa, a 1979 song called Packard's Goose, which is on the, on the album Jaws Garage, Act 2 and 3, and it contains this lines. Information is not knowledge. Knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is not truth. Truth is not beauty. Beauty is not love. Love is not music, and music is the best, says Frank Zappa, and who am I to argue? Um, and those are really interesting terms, and those are the terms, particularly... Um, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, which feature in this model. Okay, the data, information, knowledge, wisdom hierarchy, as it's usually referred, is an epistemological system usually associated with Russell Acoff from 1989, although elements of it are prefigured in the work of Milan Zeleny, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, from 1987, and as I say, in more poetic forms in T.S. Eliot and in the lyrics of the Frank Zappa song I just mentioned. In order to introduce this model, what I want to do is a brief description is what is meant by data, information, knowledge and wisdom, particularly those terms. And as the name implies, this model organises the range of epistemological phenomena into those four categories. So it doesn't just take one kind of undifferentiated mess called knowledge and then kind of carve it into different uh, understandings. It uses different terms for clarity one of which is knowledge, perhaps unfortunately. But I'll just see if I can unpack what those terms are in this model and then uh, leave, leave off to say where I'm going next. Okay, so data. Uh, data indicates the set of individual facts, figures, sensory impressions and etc. Data is regarded as essentially meaningless, although it is the raw material from which meaning is derived. Now, I'll say a bit more about that later, but data is essentially meaningless. It's raw data, individual facts. Information in this model is regarded as data which has undergone some kind of organisation. So data sets may be divided into categories according to some criteria. Individual data items might be linked together according to some salient feature. So the data is organised and processed in some way. Knowledge in this model 
knowledge is essentially information which has been internalized by the person this is really important actually internalized by the person such that it might be put to use an important feature of knowledge is that whereas information and data may reside in texts may reside in objects it might reside in events knowledge on the other hand and knowledge acquisition knowledge ownership knowledge transfer can only be affected by human agents knowledge has to be embodied in this model wisdom is the final one on the list wisdom is seen as the possession of knowledge so it continues with the internalization process the possession of knowledge such that one is able not only to observe patterns of information within data and make intelligent connections between different patterns but also to feel the principles which underlie the patterns themselves so wisdom puts you in a very privileged and hierarchically elevated position so you can see the patterns which underpin the organization of knowledge into of information into knowledge wisdom allows to want to see these various patterns in their contexts and to be able to remain independent of immersion in that context oneself so you kind of elevated when you possess wisdom and you can kind of oversee the wider landscape of, 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 of knowledge okay so what I want to argue here is that this model draws on certain key metaphors now these are partially spatial metaphors of course, which I will argue map coherently onto those outlined in my previous analysis of tacit and explicit knowledge in the work of Michael Polanyi. So the same metaphors apply, and I'll, I'll try and draw connections when they're appropriate. And indeed, it also maps onto the less formal ideas of objective and subjective knowledge, which I've used earlier and tried to unpack a little bit. In addition, though, a close reading of the data, information, knowledge, wisdom, distinctions reveals a set of metaphors drawn not only from the properties of space but also to the properties of objects specifically the substantial properties of hardness and softness lightness and heaviness liquidity granularity and evanescence okay i think i've just got time to just introduce data and i'll leave the information knowledge and wisdom for the next video so data in this, as an example of what I mean, data is understood primarily as a physical resource. The raw data I spoke about, a physical resource. And the metaphorical form of this resource has a number of properties which distinguish it from information and from knowledge and from wisdom. Firstly, data is conceptualized as a large number of individual, separate, atomistic entities like an aggregate of small stones or a pile of leaves blown by the wind items of data have an ontological irreducibility which prevents their being understood as composites themselves like a fact is like an object you can't you can't divide a fact into small half facts it doesn't make sense There's, we conceive them as being irreducible so just as when one is collecting pebbles from the beach, one would not think to increase one's collection by splitting each pebble in half, so individual datum cannot be, div be divided in this way. They have that quality, granular quality. Data is also understood as pre-existing any efforts to affect its collection. So not only is data out there like scattered like pebbles on the beach it also pre-exists our uh, discovery of it we, we conceive of it in those terms it, it uh, pre-exists any efforts to affect its collection so we conceive it as simply out there waiting for some kind of exploratory practice to discover it such entities such items of data may be collected they may be mined they may be gathered they may be stored so this is the kind of language we use when we're talking about data and this is all the language of discrete objects mining gathering storing on the other hand because items of data are unconnected to every other item they might also easily be lost they might fall away one from another they might disaggregate they might slip through the fingers or slip through the cracks Okay, I haven't got time to go into information, knowledge and wisdom right now. But what I'll be pursuing there is that the, the substantial qualities, the substance-like qualities,
qualities that we attribute to data is, uh, is drawn from a metaphorical schema about the substances that we give to epistemological entities, knowledge objects, if you like. And data we conceive as individual, hard, granular, out there, indivisible, indivis uh, indivisible and um, preceding our arrival. What I'll be doing in the next couple of videos is looking at the other components of this model, the information, knowledge, and wisdom, and, uh, and saying that these, these other uh, kinds of knowledge entities display different substantive qualities as well. They, they take on the qualities, metaphorically, of other kinds of substances in a completely coherent way, and one which is to say maps onto those other schema that are in operation here. Okay, thanks very much for watching.